Greetings, folks, and welcome to today's show. Our guest today is uh, His Honor the Mayor of Coffee County, uh, Gary Cordell. And uh, <coughs> Gary, I want to thank you for taking time to join us. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. And, Looking uh, forward to it. You're, uh, you're in your second term yes, sir. as mayor. Just starting my second term, yes, sir. And you've got one year behind you. You're in the second year. I've been four years behind me, but starting the, I'm in the first year of the second term. Mm -hmm. This is the first year? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Not, second not term starting September the 1st. Ah, okay. All right, so we got three more to go before mm -hmm. you have to think. So I don't need to ask you whether you're planning to run again, do I? A little too uh, early. Huh? We'll see how we'll see how things hold out. My grandkids are saying, "Paul, when are you going to come see us?" So uh, I'm listening to them, but I'm excited about the opportunity, and it's an honor to serve the people of our county. And I, I'm excited about it. Look forward to every day, and just seeing what comes forward to comes across the desk and whatever in the county. You can't believe some of the phone calls we get, but it's an honor to serve, and I want to thank yeah, our voters yeah, for the yeah, opportunity. I, I can believe it. <clears throat> okay. Well, we want to talk a little bit today about the uh, the, the conference center. And uh, we want to talk a little bit about, uh, well, there's a recent issue came up that got a fair amount of attention, uh, but it's fairly new, and that's whether or not we need to hire an attorney. And uh, then uh, we also want to talk a little bit, it turns out that uh, the uh, feds are uh, gearing up for a census mm -hmm. for 20, what, 2020. Mm -hmm. So. That's the lineup for today, folks, and uh, let's take a short commercial and we'll be back and get started. Ah, the glory days. Running to daylight on the gridiron and chasing a ball with a mind of its own. Cheering the team to victory and marching to the beat of your own drum. Memories that last a lifetime. But sometimes we're reminded of our glory days in ways we'd rather forget. Get back in the game. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live and play well. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. We're back, folks. We were talking today with uh, County Governor uh, Gary Cordell, and uh, we want to catch up on two or three things that are sort of hot button issue these days. Uh, first of all, uh, Gary, let's talk a little bit about the conference center. It uh, manages to be controversial in one way or another. Yes, sir. Whether it's uh, budget deficit, how it's managed, uh, who the uh, Members of the uh, con who controls it mm -hmm. and who how those people get selected and appointed and uh, kind of goes on and on and of course the big question always is uh, they need money just like everybody else in the county right. does so getting it funded properly is always a big issue so let's take those uh, uh, one at a time the uh, the budget deficit situation is that uh, is that controllable? It's improving. Questionable as to how define controllable. We're the conference center, the board. Miss French is the general manager. She's really working hard to try to control that debt, and uh, take, she's taking steps 
very meaningful steps, steps to try to get that resolved. But that's been an ongoing issue for 17 and a half years oh, now. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, she's, uh, she's laid a couple of people off recently trying to it's get that in. It's been a deficit every year it's been over. 17 and a half years. Never yeah. made a penny. So, and right now with the operating agreement, Coffee County government and Manchester City government, they pay, uh, split the bond payment 50-50 and the operational cost. So there's two different agreements there, the bond agreement and the, uh, yeah. the uh, operational agreement. And that's, so. a, that's a big question, whether those two are coming up with enough money or not. And uh, meanwhile, at somebody's uh, request, you have, I think, already submitted a request for the legislature to establish a tourism tax that hopefully would be devoted substantially to that. Yeah. It was mentioned early on about the request of that if a occupancy tax, we call it occupancy tax instead of tourism, but if that's passed and the legislature is considered, that's been reviewed in the committee this week, the counties have to request that and that's, that, that's acted upon and passed by the legislature. Right. We don't know if they'll even implement it or not this year. But you but have asked a, for it. We've asked for that, yes we have. Okay. And they, that went through the process and the uh, uh, county commission voted on that to send it on and that was sent properly on to the legislatures. So that's being reviewed now, now, right now. But in that, the uh, the county's position on that most probably will be, I understand the conference center and the PBA wanting the proceeds from that, and you can make a good argument that some of that could be used to offset that deficit to pay part of the operating costs. But the county commission, they're thinking on that right now, is that fund should go into county operations, just county general, and then let the appropriate committee or whatever make the decision in the budget process as to how that money is, is, is portioned out. That's right. Uh always the case isn't mm -hmm. it? and uh, you don't have any idea there's no way to predict uh, out of that uh, what sort of revenue would wind up for the conference. Well it depends on what percentage that the uh, tax is approved we don't know yet even what that percent that tax percentage will be approved by passed on to the you know or for the county. Would the, would the amount of that tax uh, be determined by the state also? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because okay. they have a ceiling of 17.5% on that with nine and three quarters on the state tax, sales tax, and then the city, the six whatever that the city would have, for example, or the uh, amount the city would have, and then the hotel motel tax on top of that, that figure can't exceed 17.5%. Yeah. So says the legislature. Well, through the years, uh, the, the financing of the Coffer Center has been between the county and the city of Manchester. Tullahoma hasn't contributed to that. That is, is that true. true. That is true. And I understand they've asked to be excused from the uh, occupancy tax that you're trying to get. Uh, For hotel motel tax, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've asked to be left out. Uh, can they do that? Will that work? I don't know. The county commission would have to review that. Right now, I don't know that it can be because that's already been submitted to the legislature, and that would be applying to... You know, both both municipalities. That that was what was submitted. That's what I early was on. wondering. Right. Is there any way? It's after the fact. You know, I, I don't see that applying right if now. If it passes, could could Tullahoma be left yeah. out? And I know there was some concern expressed that that may adversely impact Tullahoma, for example. And we don't want to do anything to adversely impact either city. But the, uh, the they've done a study on it, a very comprehensive study on this over the years, saying that locally that does not negatively impact very little any municipality across this across this country. They've already researched that extensively before and saying that, well, for example, if you're going to whatever city to get a night in the room, uh, in a hotel, you're going to call and see what the rate is for that hotel and you're going to shop with the hotel uh, what they charge. I've never asked before, well, what is your hotel motel tax or your yeah. sales tax or whatever? Yeah. That's just an add-on and you never, yeah. you never ask that. But we've been assured in some of the studies that were done that that does not have very little negative impact on any municipality, period. On any what? On any, any city, any city or county. It because that's just uh, people coming through from wherever. It that, doesn't run anybody off. It doesn't right? run anybody off. Yeah. Because they're just calling to see what is my... What's my, what are you going to charge me tonight? If it's $99 or $150, if it's $99, i am going with the one for $99. Yeah. I never ask about, well, what's the hotel motel tax rate? Well, since you've, uh, you're the county mayor and you've asked for the tax, uh, I guess you're in favor of it, huh? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Personally, you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because and, if uh, that money coming through could save Coffee County 
Coffee County taxpayers two or three cents on a property tax rate that's thrust upon them. I'd rather people coming through, traveling from Miami or wherever coming through, sharing yeah. some of their dollars to keep that tax rate low, and that's what we're trying to do, okay. rather than you know, put that on the backs of our county taxpayers. <clears throat> All right. Hope that makes some sense. Yeah. Well, so there's a, uh, well, let's see, one other thing we have talked about. There's been some controversy about the membership of the mm -hmm. PBA. Right. The PBA being what, the Public Building public Authority? Public Building Authority. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not exactly even sure what they do other than, do they do anything other than the counties that they have in the conference center? Well, years ago when they started, the Public Building Authorities were set up, a few of them uh, statewide, were set up to be the entity by which a entity could have a bond floated through. That was the original purpose of the public building authorities many years ago. So Coffee County set that one up, and the primary purpose was to be a facilitator of bonds being issued where, let's say, a county, XYZ County, 50 miles down the road, they may not have a PBA, but they thought they'd get a little better rate on the finance on that bond if they went through a public building authority to help them facilitate the bond floating the bonds, and that was the purpose of that. Is that, but that for, pretty well, for any facility in the county? Those that would be floating bonds, yes. But that uh, that pretty well has died out because that was tied to variable rates years ago, and since that's gone out, that I don't know that any county is using it for that purpose now. But in our, in our world right now, it's primarily for the oversight of the conference center. That's all they do? Yes, sir. And uh, there was some controversy about how they get selected. Uh, yes, sir. And, uh, a lot of controversy about that. Well, now, talk, tell us about that. Okay. Back uh, in, in, in the situation that happened back in September, there was a rendering of an opinion according to a state law that said that PBAs, their membership should be uh, as close to, let's say you got two entities going 50-50, then the membership should be made up of 50-50. And that was the interpretation that was made uh, on that question that came up back and in September. In your case, it would be half from the county and half mm -hmm. from Manchester. Manchester. Okay. Right. But Manchester already has two, as does Tullahoma and the rural part of the county, and there's one at large. But I requested that the, uh, the County Technical Assistance Service render an opinion on that, and when they did, they determined that since the PBA was the entity that crafted that and began that years ago as a county function, that the city, you know, you don't have to go with that law, essentially. And so the membership makeup is as it has been for 17 and a half years now with two from Manchester, two from Tullahoma, and two from the rural part of the county, and one at large. And the county mayor, CTAS, did confirm that opinion that by structure that is the authority of the county mayor to make that determination. And, uh, and Tullahoma will continue to receive two, two members as they have been for 17 and a half years. Yeah. Well... Somebody might raise a question about that. Okay. Well, all right. Uh, the uh, what's you you think this issue is is beginning to settle down? Is it uh, is it is it being resolved one way or the other? Or are you waiting? You primarily waiting on the legislature for the. Tax? No, we're not waiting on the legislature. We're going right ahead and just it's business as usual as far as we're yeah, concerned. Yeah. We're going to see if the if a tax, occupancy tax or hotel motel tax is passed. But uh, the county's opinion on this, county government, is that, that those funds will flow into the general operating budget and then budget finance or whatever committee would make the decision that if we want to put some money to go into conference center operation, we could or to do whatever. But that would remain in county general. So the uh, conference center could wind up with insufficient budget again, huh? Just like it has been for 17 and a half years. Mm -hmm. Well, then what's the point in having the new tax? To hopefully provide some re a stream of income coming in the county, as I said earlier, to take some pressure off of us or having to have a someday another property tax increase for the entire county. Yeah. I'd rather let it, as I said, people coming through Miami or whatever, putting a few dollars on the table to help us control our tax structure rather than... Okay than putting it back on the backs of our taxpayers. At that point, then, the uh, things at the conference center may not change much. That is true. Well, okay, this, uh, we've done enough on that, folks. Mm -hmm. Let's take a short commercial break, and we'll come back and talk something else.
Keith Barnett here at Russell Barnett Kia in Tullahoma. Check out this 2018 Kia Stinger, yours today for only $370 a month. Kia is the power to surprise with its 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. Stop by Russell Barnett Kia in Tullahoma and let us tell you why we are number one in customer satisfaction. That's Russell Barnett Kia in Tullahoma, home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. And remember, my question is, why buy anywhere else? It's time for every family and business in Tullahoma to go green and recycle. Tullahoma Public Works makes it simple and easy to recycle. Just place your recyclable materials, paper, plastic, aluminum, and cardboard beside your garbage container on the same day your garbage is picked up. Your recycled materials don't have to be in a fancy container. Recycling is not only the right thing to do, it makes sense. Recycling pays. Paying to bury our garbage costs each of us. Please do your part. Let's go green, Tullahoma, and recycle. When your family suffers the loss of a loved one, the caring and compassionate staff at Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel are standing by to assist you in every way possible. We are proud to support local industry and offer only Batesville caskets. Many funeral homes don't own or operate a crematory. We utilize the only crematory in Coffee County. Your loved one never leaves Coffee County. We can accommodate any need and any budget. Consider our complete pre-need service to remove this burden from your family during their time of grief. Lock in today's low costs and protect from inflation. Tullahoma Funeral Home and Coffee County Funeral Chapel. Our family caring for your family. We're back, folks, and we're talking today with uh, County Mayor uh, Gary Cordell. And uh, we've just uh, finished dealing with uh, uh, one of our controversial <laughs> items that keeps cropping up, having to do with the conference center. Yeah, we can talk the next 30 minutes on that topic. Yeah, so that's, uh, we could spend the whole time yeah. on that. But well, we've, let's, I think let's we've found one, that. Yeah. one or two others. Uh, uh, just recently, and I don't know whether this is going anywhere or not, there. There cropped up a, a request to uh, uh, hire a Coffee County attorney. Right. right now, we contract with a, an attorney in private practice. That is correct. To provide the county mm -hmm. uh, with legal services, and those are defined uh, between the two parties. So uh, the question now is whether instead of that, you would hire a, cafeter uh, a county attorney as a permanent staff member. Uh, I can see, uh, among other things, one complication in that from what I read is that you got three committees in the county commission that would have a hand in that, and uh, getting those three committees to come together with an agreement might be a bit of a challenge all in its own. What a do major you think? challenge, yes, sir. Huh? A major challenge. <laughs> a major challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, those three committees are budget and finance, uh, personnel, and, uh, and legislative. Uh, but the decision in the final analysis would have to be made by the full commission. True. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there were, uh, in, in researching that, and I guess you went to CTAS, did you, to, uh, to get some? I did. To get mm -hmm. some advice on this. That's our county technical assistance service, and we right. I call them all the time. Right, right, and uh, uh, they're they're often very helpful. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of that, you found out there are only uh, seven counties mm -hmm. out of our 95 or so counties mm -hmm. that have a a, a full-time attorney. That's staff correct. Attorney. Mm -hmm. And four mm -hmm. of those, of course, the biggies. Right, the big boys. And uh, that only leaves three that might be comparable. Uh, those were Green, Bradley, and Sumner. Yes, sir. Wherever that is. So, uh, are we comparable? No, sir. We're we're not, Tom. In that, uh, right now, Granger County for uh, Sumner County, for example, they have about 183,000 people. We have around 55,000 Coffee County. We're going to be going into our okay. census three times. As many. So they're three times the size we are. Uh, Green County, I think, has right at. Uh, 67 or 8,000 people, and Bradley County, the third county, they have right at 99,000 people. Right. And in doing research on that, uh, 
their budgets in two of those counties were, well, I think one of the counties total budget for a county, uh, full-time county attorney with administrative help and benefits. One county was like 219,000, one was 252 or three, something like that. And uh, the other county, I think that person was making about eighty three or four thousand dollars, but we didn't find out. We couldn't find out exactly what the benefits they were being paid. So when you look at that, all three counties, their budget is well in excess of a hundred, or in two of those cases, at least over two hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Not that, not that that's they're not worth that, but we felt like that's that's a little premature right now for needs in Coffee County. Right now in Coffee County, last year uh, our county attorney. Uh, the county paid that person right at fifty-five thousand dollars for that county attorney services. Total, T total. Well, plus they also uh, that person also does the ta uh, delinquent tax attorney work I for was the just county, say, that's and that was about sixty-four thousand. But that was in addition. Then. That was in addition, but a county attorney can provide both those services, county general, and then uh, include the tax work in that. Now, one of those counties, uh, I'm trying to remember which one it was. That county attorney, I think they had a paralegal and couple of people on board, but in one of those counties they did county general, uh, ambulance service, law enforcement, and a school department. Right. But see, our school, county school department, they have their own attorney, so yeah. you know, there's a lot of different things we can look at. Do there. all three of ours have an attorney, have their own attorney? That all is three. the county system, Manchester and Tullahova? Yes. The school uh, systems. Oh, the school system? I don't know on that. I'm not, only speaking for the county school system. Yes, they retain, they have attorney in uh, Chattanooga, excuse me, in Manchester. I don't know who the other, to the city entities, I don't know who they use. Well, no, but they each have their own attorney. Yes, sir. All three systems mm -hmm. have their, have mm -hmm. one. Now, I don't, know the the, I don't know if it's full time. They and they may, may yeah, either they may, their own decision whether right. it's full time or. Mm -hmm. But or now, someday going company. forward, we could, and I'm not saying we don't need to be looking at that. Because I want to look out for the good of our county and so on. And we've got one of the things that's entered into our discussion and consideration in that is the number of pending lawsuits that we have uh, against the county from uh, from the county sheriff department. Yeah. And doing some research on that, I wanted to find out other counties as Big to issue, how yeah. many counties, you know, how many lawsuits do the other counties have as it relates to law enforcement. And Franklin County had zero, supposedly. Bedford County only had two pending lawsuits. Uh, Loudoun County, I checked with the mayor there, they've got one pending lawsuit. In Loudoun County, with 53,000 people. And Hamlin County, with 68,000 people, they've got four lawsuits. And we've got 17 pending lawsuits. How come? How come? That is a good question. I've tried to research that. Um, some of the answers given were, uh, have we properly trained our correctional officers in the past? To what extent were they trained? How properly trained were they? Uh, how selective were you in your recruitment of those correctional officers? And um, a lot of that, there's some valid questions to be asked there. I can't answer those because I wasn't involved in that process. But as far as what training they had back in that day, I don't know. I can comment on the training now. I know with Sheriff Parton, he's implemented a lot of serious uh, changes in, in the training of our COs. And I was in a session about two weeks ago with him when they were interviewing two uh, potential correctional officers. And uh, with a new internal affairs and training coordinator they have, uh, he's implemented a protocol where I think they've got about 30 pages in their application process. Now well, in that, you know, uh, they had 100, they're gonna have 160 hours in initial training plus 40 hours in post training early on. Where you wind up, Gary, is back uh, a, a major complaint that uh, Sheriff Graves had is that he uh, is understaffed mm -hmm. and he's primarily understaffed because he's underpaid. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that Sheriff, should have been addressed five Sheriff and Parton, the county should have addressed that five and ten years ago. Yeah, Sheriff Parton is uh, coming along saying the same thing. Right. So if they're understaffed and they can't, uh, they can't recruit well uh, because they're not paying adequately mm -hmm. and they can't retain people mm -hmm. because they're not paying adequately. And you usually get what you pay for. And, yeah, and uh, that would, of course, include the training of mm -hmm. them. And so you're right back. Uh, sounds to me like for all the problems that the sheriff is having uh, really relate just to that, to the personnel situation, well, does. which is uh, not adequate. Yeah. And, and I'm not uh, implying so with that that we had insufficient training or they weren't doing it. I don't know. That was before my time. But I do know that when 
when I came on about four years ago, the correction officers were only being paid $10.34 an hour. Yeah. That's unbelievable. We went through, a, we had an ad hoc committee and went through that process and we worked it out to where they could get a dollar and a half an hour raise and then they got about 25 cents about a year ago, but now they're only at 12 22 an hour, I believe, and when you compare with other counties, even Grunning County next door is paying more than what our CEOs are, yeah. and other counties, some yeah. of them are at 14 and $15 an hour. We've got to get that level up so we can get better people. Okay. And that's what we're working on. I'm glad on. you say, hear you say we got to get it up. we got to. Because uh, you're, you're going to support that. But yes, sir. you're back to the old budget and finance committee mm -hmm. uh, flap, and... Uh, now I've already put this on the table for them to be yeah. reviewing. I think it uh, looks like from the numbers up there that we've just flat run out of time. So, folks, Already? we're going to have to take a short commercial break and uh, wrap up. Russell Barnett Hometown Auto Rental has proudly served your auto rental for over 30 years. Check out this huge selection to choose from. Small car, mid-size car, full-size car, crossover vehicle, SUV, minivan, pickup trucks, 12 and 15 passenger vans. Whether big or small, Russell Barnett Hometown Auto Rental has them all. Stop by our two locations to serve you, Tullahoma and in Winchester. And remember, my question is, why rent anywhere else? So you've been meaning to do something healthy, commune with nature, get outdoors and meet new people. We have the perfect solution. Come hike with us. You can find a Tennessee Trails Association chapter near you, including Clarksville, Columbia Franklin, Highland Rim, Jackson, Knoxville, Oak Ridge, Memphis, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Plateau at Crossville, and Upper Cumberland. We're on the web at tennesseetrails.org. It's fun, it's stress-free, and it's good for you. See you on the trails. We're back, folks, and we've been talking today with Coffee County Mayor Gary Cordell. And uh, we had, uh, we've talked about a couple of sort of hot button issues, but uh, there was one thing coming up that is really very important for a whole mm -hmm. bunch of reasons. And uh, Gary, I think you'd like to take a minute or so to remind the folks what's coming up. Huh? Okay, be glad to. I can take about 10 minutes to do that, but one thing I want to come up with real quickly is that we're coming up on our 2020 census. So and it's my responsibility to assemble a team, uh, and we've got about 25 team members will be coming together to comprise that uh, complete count census committee. And those will be volunteers. There'll be a lot of time put in that, and I've selected those people. We're getting emails out to them, whatever, right now, so they'll be coming to the table. We've got our first meeting on March the 6th. that will be a three-hour training session. We've got a lot going on with that. We're going to, uh, the government's going to hire about 50 to 75 people, but we've got a lot of work ahead of us. What's your time frame? When have you got to be ready? We got to start work on eight by April one. By April mm -hmm. one. Yes, sir. Well, okay, but when will you have to have f people in the field? By well, April I'm hoping one? we've been, been encouraging people to go ahead and send their applications in. I'm encouraging our seniors and our veterans to really get on board on that. We're going to be hiring, as I said, 50 to 75 people, and the federal government will be paying those people 12 to 15 dollars an hour on that. Okay. All right. Well. Thanks very much for joining us today, uh, thank you. Gary. And, it's been uh, great to be here, and I want to thank our people for the opportunity to serve them and be here. All right, Let's do it again. Very good. And with that, folks, we'll thank you uh, for inviting us into your parlor, and we'll see you next time.